demanded for a robbery of a quarantine supermarket. The AFC says the president is acting according to the constitution on the appointment of a chairman and a gunman remanded over the rifle found in his house in the city. News in depth with Ivor Wharton begins now. With tonight's edition of News in Depth, I'm Ivor Wharton. Thanks for joining us. First up, two men remanded to prison for the robbery committed on the Good Life supermarket. Two suspects in the robbery of the Good Life supermarket at Belvedere on the quarantine have been remanded to prison. The men, 20-year-old Daniel Grant and 19-year-old Sean Thompson, appeared before Magistrate Marissa Metalhauser in the Albion Magistrates Court, where they were charged with robbery under arms. They will make their second court appearance on January 30th. Earlier this week, the staff and customers of the Good Life supermarket were robbed at gunpoint by bandits. The entire ordeal was caught on camera. The robbers took over $500,000 in cash and other items. More news on the other side of this break. Hey, looky there. Let me go to the techie boots. Boots? No, mama, mama. I ain't gonna get a lack of teeth in a big stinky 30 second boots. Plus, it can be more cheaper online. And don't get my favorite color, pink. Let me go on. Online shopping. Cheaper, faster, better. Pass back. Nothing compares to the class and beauty of Beeson windows and doors. Engineered by professionals and built to last longer than the competition. Buy 10 windows and get one 24 by 16 bathroom window absolutely free. No tricks, no gimmicks, and no hidden fees. Prices starting from 13.5 VAT inclusive. So visit our showroom today at lot 1228 New Eccles Industrial Site or BPAT's building on Regent Street and save big on UPVC or aluminum windows. To order now, call 622. 4197 or 226 1292. Welcome back. The Alliance for Change defended President David Granger's decision on GCOM's nominees submitted by the opposition leader, saying it was constitutional. The Alliance for Change, part of the coalition government, has added its voice to the ongoing selection of the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. This comes days after President David Granger said the current list submitted by the opposition leader Barry Jagdeo was unacceptable. Jagdeo, for his part, is threatening legal action and the AFC is not taking kindly to his comments. That person must be a person that is acceptable to the president. And in my understanding of what transpired between the president's letters and the opposition leader, is that he has found that those first that names on the first list are not acceptable to him. Okay? And that is wholly constitutional. You go to a second list. And if on the second list, the president feels that those six other names are not acceptable, he can tell him it is not acceptable. And then he can proceed to name whosoever he wants of his own volition. There is absolutely no reasons that are required for the, the president to give to the leader of the opposition, why I don't want them six names. None. And no court of law can compel him to so do. It's a political question. And the issue is non-justiciable. That's what we lawyers call it. So all this nonsense that Anil Nandalal is talking, that he's going to carry to court, and now Jack, they'll jump on that bandwagon to say he's going to carry it straight to CCJ. You've got to go through High Court Court of Appeal before you read CCJ, if they don't know. You understand me? So don't be impressed by that. That's a lot of nonsense. And I, as I'm saying, and I will say it just now, but the whole point of it, it is totally constitutional what the president is doing. Ramjatan said all the talk about the president's decision is outrageous and without any cogency about them. And it is misconceived. Man found with high-powered weapon in the city remanded while police discovered ammunition and ecstasy pills in a city ward. 
An East La Penitence resident was today remanded to prison for the illegal possession of arms and ammunition. The man, 28-year-old Cesar Gonzalez, appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, where the charge was read to him. The prosecution told the court that the man was found with the weapon for which he was not licensed to carry. Yesterday, the police acting on information swooped down on the apartment complex and went straight to the second apartment where the gun was found and subsequently arrested the man. Meanwhile, the police today reported that several persons from the Rasville community were detained after the discovery of ammunition and ecstasy pills were found. The police in their reports that 16 live rounds from different calibers of weapons and 118 ecstasy pills were found. Those arrested included three females. Women's rights activist calls on government to do more to protect domestic violence victims as she urges victims to speak up. The government is being urged to do more to protect women from their abusers since current legislations are impotent. This is according to Nicole Cole, Commissioner on the Women and Gender Commission. Cole believes a femicide law is needed if the government is serious about protecting women. The femicide law makes it uh, mandatory for certain things to happen. It means that the case, cases whereby women are being killed and uh, murdered, maimed and harmed, for instance, like the young lady who lost her arm, it will be scaled up. It wouldn't go through this normal, long, long, long process that it takes here for cases to get to court. With a femicide law, it means well that you have up, uh, up the ante then and you want to get serious and to really do something. Referencing the two recent cases in Berbice where a young mother was murdered by her estranged husband and a former school teacher's arm was severed by her ex-boyfriend, Cole believes women ought to take the necessary steps to protect themselves. She added that those two victims walked away from their abusers and still suffered, which stresses the need for a different approach to be taken in this situation. In 2017, where women can go and sign up to get trained uh, in the skills to use a weapon and they can apply and get uh, firearms legally and be able to carry it in order to protect themselves. If men know that women were armed to protect themselves, there would be a different response. There's no deterrent. We're just like sitting ducks. Prosthetics is expensive. For her to have a prosthetic arm, it, it will take a cost. It, her bone have to heal. It have to, um, then you have to fit it. There are many things that are involved. How does she survive? Who takes her? Who employs her? You have all your faculties intact and it's hard to get a job. Who takes her? That's a wrap for this edition of News In Depth. Do enjoy a pleasant weekend. Join us here next week.